The SBA, you know, the small bull <laughs> administration has utterly ruined the rollout of the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, or more commonly known as the EIDL program, causing irreputable damage to America's small businesses. Entrepreneurs nationwide are left in the dark, not knowing if or when they will receive their $10,000 grant or the emergency loan. Even Congress is getting fed up with Administrator Javita Carenza's conduct. Is she on her way out? Oh yes, my friends. But wait, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Hello and welcome to the Stephen Carlson Show. I'm Stephen Carlson. I'm a tech entrepreneur, real estate investor, author, YouTuber, and a volunteer paramedic. Before we get to today's video, I want to give all of you guys a sincere thanks. My channel has almost doubled its subscriber count in the past week and has gone from a few hundred views per day to over 5,000 views in a single day, and it keeps climbing. This would not be possible without all of you guys clicking, like, commenting, and subscribing. I'm very humbled by your support, and I appreciate all of you guys. Thanks. All right, back to the idol update. Jason uploaded a great video a few days ago, and I want to share a little clip with you. Something is going on. I think it's a confluence of events. The GAO, the Government Accountability Office, accused the SBA about 10 days or so ago of violating the law. And they pretty much, if you read that letter, told Ms. Carranza, head of the SBA, if you don't start granting us the interviews and hand over all the documents, I don't know, we're going to send the cops, we're going to walk you out in handcuffs, we're going to indict you. They're not having it. Whoa, wait, handcuffs? Well, that would be interesting. Of course, I'm sure Jason is just using some creative license to paint a very vivid scene for you. But I do agree with him. American small businesses are fed up with the lies, deceit, stonewalling, and the unilateral rule changes from the SBA. Surprisingly enough, we even have bipartisan support in DC. You know, if there is one thing that really pisses Congress off is when another agency usurps the power of Congress and just makes their own rules. As you know, Congress passed the CARES Act and had a specific set of instructions on how they expected the stimulus to be administered. And we all know that the SBA did not exactly follow Congress's intent. Instead, they decided to make their own rules as they went along. In the world of politics, this is a cardinal sin and someone will have to pay for this. In late March, with a nationwide shutdown underway, businesses were in full panic mode. They needed, and sadly in many cases still need, a quick infusion of cash to keep the bills paid. This massive urgency to get a stimulus law passed quickly caused some less than optimal wording to make it into the final bill. Junior staff members were hurriedly typing away at 3 a.m. trying to get a draft ready for Congress to pass. Phrases like may request and up to $10,000 should have been more clarified or at least rewritten before the act was passed. But sadly, there was really no time. Honestly, I doubt few, if any, of Congress even had the opportunity to read the bill before the unanimous vote. See, the issue is Congress intended for the SBA to give all small businesses a $10,000 cash advance slash grant when they applied for the loan under the EIDL program. But as we already said, that wasn't exactly the wording that was actually passed into law. Congress has stated on multiple occasions what their intention was, and they expected the SBA to live up to this intention but the SBA just decided to make their own rules and just do it their own way instead of following the law's intent. Ranking member of Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, Senator Ben Cardin is less than pleased with the SBA. A specific example of a Maryland small business owner, Nick Johnson, who runs a small furniture company, 28 workers. He applied for a PPP pro uh, loan and got it. He applied for the idol because he needed the funds for working capital and it gave him a 30 year loan program so that he could use it for working capital. He applied for it immediately in March. Two months later, he heard uh, he was eligible to receive $380,000 under the formula, but was capped at $150,000 rather than 380,000. As a result of not being able to get those funds, he had to go into his PPP funds and lay off workers. So we intended for the EIDL program and the PPP program to work together. And Madam Administrator, on the volume level, as we understand it, 
only 15 percent of loans were processed and, uh, and that there's still a huge backlog in processing these loans. You've put a cap on the program. We don't understand why. You've, you've delayed the applications of those that have already been filed, and you've closed the windows in non-agricultural programs. Why is the EIDL program not being used to its full capacity, and what can we expect in the future moving forward? The senator has pointed out numerous times that the SBA has made multiple unilateral rule changes that violate the CARES Act, and his frustration is shared across the aisle with both party lines. Simply put, they're pissed at Carranza. I'm hearing she could be replaced, Miss Carranza. I don't know, with someone who's going to honor the intent and the law as written. Senator Ben Cardin said in a Senate hearing on June the 10th, the SBA had no authorization to limit the grant at 1000 per employee. That is not in the CARES Act. They also had no authorization to limit the loan at 150 grand instead of the normal amount of $2 million. That is not in the CARES Act. I understand, and part of me sympathizes with the SBA because the CARES Act was so poorly planned out when it was written. It was basically doomed to fail from the onset. It would have been a far better program if the idle loan and the advanced grant were two separate programs. If you wanted the loan, you could apply for idle. If you only wanted the grant, you should have been provided an option just to apply for the grant. This would have dramatically simplified the process at the SBA. Several lawsuits have been filed against the SBA and the administrator, but in my humble opinion, and remember, I am not a lawyer, I'm just some dude on the internet, but I feel that these lawsuits probably are gonna go nowhere. And there are several very key legal issues that reduce their impact. Now, should I make a video that breaks down the legal aspects of these suits and why they're basically destined to fail? If so, comment down below and let me know that you would like to see a video. As you guys know, I have applied for the idol for two of my small businesses. The first business I applied on March 30th and I'm still waiting to hear something, anything back from the SBA. I have called multiple times, written multiple emails, and even sent a certified letter. Check out the video above in the card. The second business that I own also applied for Idle on the same day and only about 15 minutes later. And for some reason, that was fully approved and fully funded for the loan of $256,000 on a 30-year fixed term. I guess I'm damn lucky that I got the 256,000 instead of the arbitrary 150,000 the SBA has capped loans at currently. I still have absolutely no clue how they came up with the 256,000. As I know some of my friends that make less money per year in their business than I do, and they were approved for even more money. And then at the same time, I know of another friend that makes far more money than my business does, and he was only approved for 125,000. So I'm guessing there's a formula, but it kind of seems pretty random too. Neither of my businesses have ever received the grant money that they are entitled to. I've heard from other YouTubers like LA Late that the SBA has this disdain for free money people, as they call it, that only want the grant. And if they label you this way, your application is basically tossed to the side in permanent ignore status. Now, this is not the case for me, as for both of these, I wanted the full loan from the IDLE program. In my next video, I will cover a breakdown of why and when you should take the IDLE versus just the grant. In this video, I featured some great clips from Jason. His channel is fantastic, and I found it really informative. His passion and in some cases, his rage is so powerful. Check out his channel and let him know the Steven Carlson Show sent you. The link is in the description. What other channels do you guys watch and love? Who should I feature here in the future? Why don't you comment down below and let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate everybody that keeps clicking like and subscribe and making comments on my video. Everybody that comments, I try my absolute best to reply back to every single message. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.